I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 1st of January 2024. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today we're going to be discussing is 2024 the right year for you to be coming to Nicaragua? Whether you're coming just for a vacation, looking to get away a little bit, if you're looking for something more like maybe relocating, looking for a place to retire, or uh, something to just explore you don't know what the opportunities are that are out there maybe you want to be a digital nomad or something and you're wondering where is good to give that a try we're going to be talking about how 2024 is shaping up for the beautiful country of nicaragua today I've been down with a respiratory thing going on for about a month since just before I headed to Bolivia and I've been pretty much filming around the house for a while, which is not ideal. I know, I know that like the garden's nice. If you see one episode, like that's cool. If we do it all the time, it gets pretty repetitive. So I'm really excited to be out doing a walk again out uh, now I'm keeping it simple. I'm just out on the Ponaloya road. You guys have seen this before, but it's a beautiful day and the traffic isn't too bad. So it's a nice day for going out and doing a little walk. I'm glad to be out. I need this, I need to be getting the exercise again. And uh, I'm still not 100% over whatever I had, but I'm feeling pretty good. Before we go too far, I do wanna mention, some of you are not aware that I have other channels, first of all, lots of them, all kinds of different things. But one of them is, so this is the Scott Allen Miller vlog. You can see it anywhere when you look around the episode, but I have another channel simply called Scott Allen Miller. Exactly the same, just doesn't say vlog at the end. It's technically my older channel, but I never used it for anything. It's where I now throw raw footage of things that I make for this channel or others could be concert stuff could be uh, recording in Ipico or whatever when you see it on here I tend to edit it sometimes a lot you just see a couple minutes out of some really long recording and when I have hours of footage that might be interesting to somebody often I'll edit it just for a few minutes just stick some things together maybe add music depending and throw it over on that channel so it's it's very raw that's why I call it that uh, but it's been getting a lot of love recently because just some of that footage is interesting to people and it would be fantastic Fantastic. So I just have to say, I'm at a point where that channel is completely ready to monetize. The only thing is it doesn't have enough subscribers. All I need is some of you guys to head over there, hit that subscribe button. You don't even have to watch anything, although I'd love it if you did. And that would help me get over that hump. Once I'm over that hump, it'll promote a lot more and it'll, you know, we'll just naturally get more traffic from over here. I don't put a ton of material over there. Uh, I keep it pretty lean. I only post, you know, once a month, once every two weeks, something like that. Depends what I'm out recording, but it would be amazing if that channel was getting a little bit of attention in the same way as well and it would help justify just the extra time putting that up there so that is my request to all of you if you get a moment just go over there hit that subscribe button and in it would if if we had one out of every three viewers of of today's episode did that this morning we'd be over the hump just like that we'd be monetized so i would really appreciate it if you guys took a moment to do that to do that and then uh you know watch those when they come up too that would be great so today's question is 2024 a good year for you to come to nicaragua but the answer is easy, right? You know, I'm a Nicaragua channel. I live here myself. It is a fantastic place. I love being here. And 2023 proved to be a really great year for people who traveled to Nicaragua. It has been very safe, although we do, we lost a bit of ground this year, not because Nicaragua became less safe. I guess it did just a tiny bit, but the United States got so much safer in 2023. So kudos to you guys up north for really bringing down the crime rate. So the United States actually got safer than Nicaragua in 2023, we think from the stats uh, that we've seen. But uh, for the last several years, Nicaragua has been safer. They go back and forth, but uh, it's still a very safe place to travel. And the thing that's, I think, really good for potential tourists, the reason that you, as a potential tourist, might really want to look at Nicaragua in 2024 is that just like in 2023, our tourism numbers are still pretty low. That makes it fantastic. That means our prices on things is lower than, than normal. It means that the ability to like hop around to go from hotel to hotel and not make reservations and not have to worry about everything being sold out or there not being availability, you really don't have to worry about that much. You still on Samana Santa, there's times, but by and large, you have a lot of flexibility. You have hotels with empty space. That means the rates aren't gonna be as bad and your flexibility is gonna be higher. And it also means 
that you get to spend more time going around doing things where you're going to interact more with Nicaragua itself. Whether you're going to Somoto Canyon, you want to spend time there, you're not going to have so many tourists packed around you everywhere. You want to go to the beach, you're not going to have so many beachgoers around you. You want to just, whatever you're going to do, you have more time to explore it on your own. Your, your museums are going to be more to yourself. Uh, the volcano boarding is going to be more to yourself. Just whatever it is you look to do, you're going to have uh, more for you. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't tourists. We got tourists all over the place. Nicaragua is fully in the swing of tourism and very much promoting tourism. So definitely come on down and don't think that you're going to be alone. It's just that you're not at the capacity that Nicaragua has been in the past. And very few places are. The world just doesn't have as much tourism still post-COVID as it did during COVID. But Nicaragua is less than even that. We got hit really hard, mostly because we were not a big tourist destination before COVID. And during COVID, a lot of the airlines stopped flying, which makes sense because there just weren't very, you know, once you don't have enough people coming down to fill the planes, you can't keep flying empty planes down. So places like Costa Rica, even if they went to just a small fraction of their normal tourism rate, they would still have plenty of tourists to justify the majority of flights coming in. That's really easy for them. I'm going to cross the road right here since I, I had to walk on that side just because of the light. But I know not to walk on the right. You walk on the left basic basic stuff we got a dog following us around there so but nicaragua because we had so little tourism before once we took that hit from covid there just wasn't enough for most of the airlines and so basically the the airport shut down and people had very little way to come here when i first came to visit again post covid or actually during covid i had to fly into honduras which was also very very slow but slightly more tourism than nicaragua and then drive over the border which was doable but huge pain so that's our first thing. How do you get to Nicaragua in 2024? So this really isn't bad. Because our airport is fully operational again, we got many airlines coming in, such as American United, Spirit, Avianca, Aeromexico, Copa from Panama. You have a lot of options on how to get here and get here well. Most of those airlines do best, assuming you're coming from North America and especially from the US. Sorry, Canadians. It's weird. Nicaragua gets more tourism from Canada, certainly more expats from Canada, but they get more flights from the US. So that really does help if for some reason you're originating out of Miami, you're gonna have the best connections for sure. But there are a few other places and we see some airlines returning, some more flight paths are coming. 2023 was good. We went from really hard to travel in 2022 to very easy in 2023 and then hopefully with flexibility in 2024. That's really what we're looking for here. So if you're coming from most places, you're just gonna wanna fly in. Flying into Managua is easy. It's a small airport, it's not expensive and you are in the center of the country, it's a hub. So you can go there and take a taxi or a private car or a bus or a shuttle, pretty much anything, to nearly anywhere in the country quite easily. So that's, for most travelers, that's gonna be what you're looking for. If you're coming in from other locations in Central America, you're already gonna be traveling the region, you're a backpacker, you're work working your way around, you've got a few different options. One of those options that you really don't have is flying in. If you're coming from the local region, we don't have hopper flights. Strange, I know. But we really don't fly in from around the region except for from El Salvador. So unless you're coming from there, you're gonna have to come in on the road. That could be in a bus, it could be in a private car. You've got a few options, but pretty much everyone's going to take a bus. There's smaller buses, shuttles, like the Ashimche that I like to take up to Guatemala. That's about $85, but comes all the way from Guatemala and is a small like 15 person passenger shuttle. They're really easy to deal with. Or if you want to save some money, you can come in on something like the Tika bus, the Nika Expresso, one of those types of buses. They'll cross a lot of the borders uh, and take you in a much larger bus for much less money, sometimes as little as like 40 to $50, could be 60, but like in that kind of ballpark uh, and take you generally much farther distances. You can get basically anywhere in Central America, not really Belize to the best of my knowledge, on those buses. Of course, you could get to Guatemala and then transfer to buses going anywhere, Mexico, Belize, whatever you like. So you have lots of, lots of decent options for getting in and out of the country. Nicaragua only has physical borders with Costa Rica or Honduras. So if you are looking at flying into a neighboring country and then crossing in, those are your options. Options. If you are uh, looking at land crossings one way or another, you're going to cross through one of those. If you fly into Panama and want to come up by car, you're coming through Costa Rica. You want to go to Guatemala, El Salvador, Belize, and you want to come in by car, you're coming through Honduras. Not a big deal, but that's the borders you're going to be looking at. We have some great traffic out here today. Just want to show a little bit of this as we talk about the show. If you're a first time traveler and you've never left, say, North yes. America before and you're looking for a place to go, 
Nicaragua is going to be a little bit more exotic, a little bit more adventurous than a lot of destinations you may be considering. That doesn't make it bad, but it is something to keep in mind. It may not be the first country you ever want to go to. Of course, Kemi, who's been on the show with me uh, in the last like six months, it was the first country that she ever went to. She grew up in Canada and had never traveled. And she started by coming to Nicaragua as her very first place ever. Now that was a couple years ago. This, she came back to Nicaragua and we did some, some shows together, uh, like going up and exploring uh, Hinotega, Lago de Apanas. Uh, we, did, we did a number of things. We have some really cool episodes. So you can absolutely use Nicaragua as your learning place for I want to do some international travel. And Nicaragua is not bad for that because Spanish is relatively easy to deal with for most people. If as a traveler, there are a number of people who speak English. You're not completely out of luck on that, although there aren't that many. Uh, it's very safe. It is very accessible. There's it's just easy to get around. It's easy to deal with a lot of things. Um, and and it's not far, so uh, it's easy to fly in from, say, the United States or whatever. There are simple flights in. And of course, the biggest thing in every discussion on Nicaragua is how low the cost of everything is. Pretty much no matter what you're doing, that it's really low cost in Nicaragua makes everything more accessible. It means no matter what goes wrong, you're that much more likely to be able to, say, buy your way out of a problem. And that doesn't mean you're going to have big problems. But like when you're in, say, the United Kingdom and you're on vacation around London, if you have some problems, I'm like, oh, you didn't book a hotel. Uh, you just, whatever happens, little things could, could add up really quickly. Suddenly you may be spending three or four or $500 to fix a really trivial thing that may involve your transport, your hotel or whatever. Your food could be really expensive. You suddenly realize you need to eat twice as much as you were planning on because you're walking all day, whatever. Suddenly those costs could be really large and your budget could be blown accidentally quite quickly for a lot of people. If you're, you know, worth a hundred million dollars, it doesn't matter. But if you're normal people and especially someone who's looking to travel in more exotic locations, typically you want some amount of a budget. Nicaragua makes your budget go so much farther, both for just how much you want to do and for what your protections are should something go wrong. What if you suddenly realize you're in the wrong city and you got to cross the country? Well, taking a bus is going to cost you several dollars. What if you have a real emergency and you have to get a taxi across the country right now and an emergency flight out of the country? Well, that taxi may cost you 100, at worst case, maybe $200. That's a lot, but that's not a lot for crossing a country. Try doing that in the UK or the United States should something go wrong. Obviously, you're not going to cross the US in a taxi. You know what I mean? Imagine you have to go for several hours in a taxi. It's not going to be $200. And uh, if you have to get a flight somewhere, generally you can afford it. It's only a few hundred dollars. You don't want to be spending hundreds of dollars for emergencies, but knowing that that's the kind of range that emergencies tend to be in is really important. It's a completely different thing. If you need to eat more food than you're planning on, you might lose one, two, three dollars a day if you're being conservative. You're not going to get stuck in situations where you have to spend lots of money to be able to stay or transit somewhere in Nicaragua. That's just not going to happen. So that means you have a lot of comfort. So as an, a traveler who's not as experienced, a traveler who may not know how to budget, or a traveler who may have just things go wrong and not be completely clear how to handle handle them really well. Nicaragua gives you a lot of buffer on that so that you could have a lot go wrong and really not have it be that bad. Whereas if you're in Europe, it's really easy for those things to go really wrong really quickly. So while I would rarely recommend Nicaragua for a first time traveler, it does have its benefits. There's many cases where as an early traveler doing your experimentation and how to travel that Nicaragua may work really well. I generally would recommend someplace like Western Europe, Mexico, and of course Canada for uh, Americans at least who are looking to branch out a little bit, learn a few of the travel basics before coming to someplace like Nicaragua. But early on when you're looking for a place that is generally easy, very safe and super affordable, you want to get, you know, go from like learning how to travel. That's where Canada or and Cancun, England, those kinds of places are great for uh, just how easy it is for an English speaker to ease into travel, be like, okay, I know how these things work, but once you want to go a little bit more further afield, once you want to get a little bit more exotic, once you want to see what real full-on travel is like, where you're entering a world that is nothing like where you're coming from, Nicaragua is really hard to beat. It's still safe and affordable, but it gives you a really exotic feeling where food, culture, music, lifestyle, day-to-day -day, everything is so different than North America or Europe that you can really get that feeling of having left the world you're comfortable with completely 
while not doing so in a dangerous way or a way that takes so long to get there or costs so much money. So Nicaragua can be, for an early traveler, the perfect balance. Importantly, we have no expectations on the horizon of any events happening in Nicaragua in 2024 where we anticipate anything that would make tourism non-desirable. 2023 was a great year of uh, peace and stability and low crime rates and very little changing in the country, and that's what makes really easy for travel. In 2024, you can predict that we're going to have a very similar year. It should be very calm and relaxed, and you'll be able to budget. There's not, not expected to be big changes, not big cost changes, not big changes in logistics or infrastructure, anything like that. We have lots of great projects going on, but they take a really long time. For example, we have a new Pacific Coast Highway that's expected to come in sometime in the next 10 years. Work is underway. Somebody's affected by it, but the majority of the country doesn't notice. It's going to take a long time before we feel anything from that. We have a new train line that's been announced, but again, that's going to take years. They haven't even broke ground yet, but it is coming and that will make travel in the Granada region better in the future at some point. We don't know when. Uh, we're hoping we're going to get a train line here. This is Chinandega out behind me. I'm actually in Leon as I speak, but Chinandega is so close that that is the region that you're seeing the mountains behind me and they are hoping that a train line is going to be extended through Leon out to Chinandega and connect the port into the capital to the airport. And that, I guess, would be port to port, but one's a seaport, one's an airport. Once those are connected, yeah, that'll have a great effect on the region. It'll help with tourism. Hopefully we can use that as passenger rail between the regions. That's going to be years away, and we haven't even done the, the study to make sure it can be done yet. So the beaches are still very accessible this year. We're not expecting them to suddenly fill up, although tourism is returning. We're seeing year-over-year -year growth. We're seeing this constant increase in the number of tourists. They're small increases, just a percentage here, a percentage there. So while the beaches are getting busier, they are still not busy. And that makes for a perfect time to come when you're part of that new growth. You're, you can come and see the country revitalizing itself, recovering from COVID, recovering from a period of low tourism. But you can be part of a good, healthy, organic increase rather than coming into a place that is completely lacking in tourists or a place that has already recovered and is full again. For me, I've been in and out of Nicaragua for the last nine years, first coming down in 2015. This is now 2024, and I've been living here since the very beginning of 2021. I was here in March, so I'm just a little bit away from being here for three solid years, calling this my permanent home. I moved down in 2021 and made the permanent move, having lived abroad, having lived here previously, having lived in Europe for a while, having lived in the States for a long time, we made the decision that for me and my family, that this was our long-term permanent destination. This is where we were going to live, where we were going to raise our children, where we're bringing our dogs, where we're owning a home, where we are investing our lives for the future. And my children are currently 12 and 15, and they both believe that Nicaragua is their long-term home as well. Originally, when we moved down, they talked about possibly returning to the United States when they were adults. Uh, but now they say that their plan is to be here in Nicaragua long-term. They love it here and this is where they want to grow uh, to grow up and to continue living. They do love travel. They'll use it as a home base much as we do to see much of the world. But this is where they want to return to, where they want to keep their pets, where they want to have their home, where they want to consider their home base. And those are, I think, really important things when you're looking at traveling to a place like Nicaragua, one of the things you need to be prepared for is just how much that travel also turns into a thought process, a discussion, potentially not for everyone by any stretch, but you may very much find yourself looking at Nicaragua as a place where you could spend a lot more time. You could be looking at Nicaragua as a place where you could be spending a lot more time than you initially thought. On one hand, we get tourists who often come down and discover that they don't need to leave. Nicaragua automatically gives people 90 days if you're coming from Western Europe, United States, Canada, a lot of other countries. But that 90 days can be extended for up to 180, and it's easy to do and very common. That's half a year. So a lot of people come down thinking they'll stay for a little while, and then when they realize how beautiful and wonderful and exciting and relaxing it is, and when they then find out how cheap it is and they think about just how far their money's going to go and that they don't need to return as early as they thought, and then finding out that Nicaragua is happy to let them stay for 180 days before they even have to think about doing a renewal where you could easily stay for a year, suddenly the thought that maybe this is a place you want to put in a little bit more time starts crossing people's mind. And so that's something to also consider. Nicaragua continuously brings people in as tourists for the first time 
and they just don't leave. Or they're like me and I needed to leave, but I certainly made my way back pretty quickly. Yeah, I was here in 2015. I took a little bit of a break. I lived in Europe. I was very busy. It was not until 2019 that I got to return as a tourist and spend more time uh, in that mode. But once I came back in 2019, I knew I had been away too long and I went back home and immediately started plans to move down permanently. It was so palpable how much I missed Nicaragua and how much I felt like this was home when I came back. I loved a lot of the places I lived in Europe. I've loved other places that I've lived in Latin America. It, it's, I'm very easy to please. I can go to a lot of different places around the world and be happy. But Nicaragua, for me, checked a lot of boxes and felt really good as a long-term decision. And because of the low cost, because of so many things that give us flexibility here, it has made it a really good choice for us to use as a base for exploring the world. Nicaragua doesn't have the best airport options, but the low cost of living means that we have a larger budget for whatever we're going to do when we travel. So it makes it that much easier for us to go farther and stay longer. If we were still living in the United States, our month-to-month -month budget for our housing, our food, our transportation, would be orders of magnitude larger than they are here in Nicaragua. And I mean that, actually orders of magnitude larger. Things that only cost one or two hundred dollars here will often cost one or two thousand in the United States. I guess that's a single order of magnitude, but it's still significant. It really does give us a lot more options here. And once you come here and learn that you can just stay, things start crossing your mind, such as the possibility of being a digital nomad, or possibly the possibility of retiring earlier than you thought, or the possibility of simply looking at living abroad as part of your retirement plan. Nicaragua makes all those things really easy. So the question, is 2024 a year in which you should be considering the beautiful country of Nicaragua as part of your travel plans? Absolutely. In fact, you may want to consider Nicaragua as part of your travel plans, even if you didn't have any travel plans. Nicaragua crosses an important barrier where it often makes travel so accessible that people who thought they couldn't travel can come to Nicaragua and potentially stay for quite some time. And I'm going to talk about an arbitrage component here which is of travel, which is very important. And this is something that I don't think very many people ever think about. In 2016, I lived in Romania. And while there, we experienced our first time ever profiting from travel arbitrage. What this means is when we were in Romania, even though we kept a home in the United States at that time, we still had expenses in the United States. By living in Romania, renting a home, which we did for a long time, we had a full three bedroom house that we rented in a beautiful village in Transylvania, for eating in Romania, which we did obviously for every meal, for spending our time having our internet, doing our jobs, working remotely from Romania, we discovered that we actually paid less on a day-to-day -day basis than we did if we'd stayed in the United States. Had we spent the same three month period in the United States instead of Romania, that three month of rental, the three month of renting a car, the three month of eating would have been more expenses in the United States. We actually saved money by being in Romania during that period in that year. It was amazing and it was mind blowing to us because it was a year where we rented an entire house and a year where we rented a car long-term car rental. That is not a normal thing. And those things together felt like they must be so expensive that we would lose lots of money and we were just saving up and being a little bit, you know, reckless, a little bit frivolous with our money to live abroad like this and maintain our home in the United States. And we were maintaining the home in the United States was an expense we probably should not have done, but we weren't a hundred percent ready to get rid of everything at that point. And the numbers still worked out that we were saving money over doing the conservative normal thing. And that was Romania, where flights to get there were very expensive. You, we had to have a car. There was no way to use public transportation instead. So that was quite extreme in that direction. Here in Nicaragua, our housing is actually cheaper than it was in Romania, but not much cheaper. Romania is very cheap. We do not need a car at all. Using public transportation is very accessible and very easy. The cost of food is probably comparable to Romania, but the cost of getting to and from Nicaragua is a tiny fraction of what it was of getting into Romania. To get to Romania, we had to fly from Texas to Istanbul and work our way north. But to get to Nicaragua, we can simply go to Miami and fly down in two hours. It's completely different, both in time and effort and in cost. Getting here is so cheap. So for a lot of people, if you're coming from the US or even Canada, moving to Nicaragua, even if you maintain some semblance of a life back in your home country, maybe you keep a storage unit, store some things at your parents' house, you keep a really low rent apartment, you may find that overall you're gonna save money by being in Nicaragua, which actually makes it very difficult to make an argument for leaving and heading back home because can you afford to leave? What you really wanna do in many cases is simply get rid of all your possessions back home 
bring some stuff with you and focus on living in Nicaragua. And if you can find some kind of work that is remote, it is very difficult to beat. The quality of life that you can have here, whether it's just for a few months or for a few years, or it's for the rest of your life, is often so extremely good compared to what you would be getting for the, for even much more money somewhere else, and that you can do so very safely, very affordable, and with very little effort, often blows people's minds. And, and once you're here and experiencing it, knowing that you have the option of just staying and just figuring out how not to go home, and that that will actually generally make you more money, make you able to live better with less effort, is is eye-opening and really changes your outlook on the world. So be ready that that could be an important part of your travel to Nicaragua. For some of you, it is purely a vacation. All you wanna do is hang out on the beach, drink some rum, maybe go volcano boarding, check out some beautiful colonial cities. But for others of you, Nicaragua might be an exploration in understanding more about Latin America, discovering more about the history of the colonial life in the Western Hemisphere, more museums to see, mountain villages to explore, culture to get deep inside of, and of course, to evaluate what you really wanna do with your life and you may not realize that these are things that are going to be important to you until you come to a place like Nicaragua and realize so much of the world is so much more accessible to you than you realized, then maybe it's worth experimenting with a life abroad or at least digital nomadry. This tends to be a very pro Nicaragua channel. It's going to be that way because I made the choice to move down here and every day I make the choice to remain. So the fact that I'm here making these shows is my personal testament to my decision making as a family, given the choice to live basically anywhere in the world. I have a job that lets me live anywhere. It is beneficial for me to work in this time zone or one nearby to it. So that's a big factor. We talk about that in a lot of episodes, but in general, we have a lot of flexibility. We could live in Europe, we could live in Asia, we certainly could live anywhere in Latin America. We could live in the United States, we could live in England. With all of those options open to us, we choose Nicaragua. And having been here, having learned more and more about it, having put in the time to, you know, really get into the closets and see the skeletons, know what's good and bad, know how it affects us on a day-to-day -day basis, know how it is playing out in our everyday lives, we continue to choose Nicaragua. We could pack up and move at any moment, but we don't want to. We have great options too. It's not like Nicaragua is the only good option in the region. Every day we have the choice of moving to really wonderful places like Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Belize, or even Mexico. All of those are close enough that we could drive with our dogs and move our entire family and everything we reasonably own in a weekend. We could literally move from Nicaragua to any of those places in a weekend. Mexico would be a little bit tough, all the rest easily in a weekend. With those options, we choose to stay. We love being able to visit those places, and that's a benefit of Nicaragua, that being able to visit really nice, beautiful, wonderful places is so easy. There's not that many places in the world where so many different places are so accessible. So that's a benefit too. We love that we're in the middle of Latin America and this is a beautiful, vibrant region that we really like, but we really are choosing it. So while this channel tends to be very pro Nicaragua, I'm very rah, rah, you should check it out, come and see for yourself but I do so with a lot of personal conviction. I did a lot of research. I did a lot of testing different places around the world. I asked my family, I got their opinions. We all made this decision together and we all continue to make this decision together. And Nicaragua keeps being where knowing as much as we know, having lived as many places as we have, we keep coming back to this is where we want to be. It's a great country and it's not necessarily the right country for you, but is it the right country for you to come and evaluate in 2024? I'm gonna say yes it's probably a really good year for you to come down and learn a little bit about this beautiful country for yourself. Before I go on and talk about my New Year's resolution topics, I want to just uh, share a few things with you guys. First of all, if you'd like to support the channel, and thank you to so much for everyone who has over the last few years, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. That comes directly to me, and it helps me get the cameras and go travel around and do things. There's a lot of activities that cost a bit. Even though Nicaragua is very affordable, it still costs me a bit to go spend the time and spend the get the equipment, whatever, to do those things. So it's very much appreciated, you guys, who are supporting the show monetarily. It makes a really big difference for me and my family to make this possible because it's something I love doing and I want to be able to continue doing it. So thank you to all of you and the information as always is down below as well. And I'd also like to point out, I have a number of other channels. And while I list them down on the page below and I often pop them up on the screen, I don't really talk about them that often. Most of my channels started in 2023. I put in a real effort in expanding my YouTube presence during the past year and it's made a big difference and I'm very excited about the things that we're doing there. 
I really love all the different channels we have and the different type of material that we cover, but getting you guys to help support those channels too really makes a difference. And the thing I need most is simply people to go subscribe to those channels and watch those videos when they come out. None of them come out frequently like they do on this channel. We already mentioned at the beginning of the show that I have a raw footage channel. That's at Scott Allen Miller. Please go check that out. Really is gonna make a big difference just like that to get that channel going. None of my others are close to monetization, but I wanna get them on a good healthy path towards it. Of those channels that make the biggest difference for you guys include at Nika Roomba. This is a channel where we go out and we're going to be putting in a lot of effort on this starting in just a few weeks. We have a lot of new equipment coming specifically for that channel. And that's where we record live events around the country. We go to bars and restaurants and different venues, bring a nice camera and record bands that are playing of all different types all around the country. And we want to get out and do that more and more. And we're getting a lot of requests for that. And we're holding everyone off as we wait for the new camera to arrive. But the, the camera is in my team's hands, it's in Miami, and Paul is off to get it by the time you guys are seeing this in under a week, I believe. So we'll see that really soon. It'll be a couple weeks before you guys see anything shot with it because I got to get used to it and it's got to flow through my system. But yeah, we're going to have that soon. That's Nika Roomba, and that is great if you just want to put on like a concert in the background or you want to see what different bands are like or you want to get a feel for what Nicaragua is like from a cultural perspective. It really does give you quite a feel of what it's like to go out on a normal night all over Nicaragua and to see what our bands are like because we play a variety of things. We try to see different bands and different restaurants all the time so that people are getting exposed and, and it's really a, uh, a system for allowing whether you're Nicaraguan and just want to see what other cities are doing or you're not in Nicaragua and you want to be able to travel around Nicaragua and go out at night to different venues all over the country. We want to really bring Nicaragua's musical scene and nightlife uh, to a, a broader audience. So that's Nika Rumba. Those are often one and a half to two hours long and uh, great to just put on in the background and have some music going on. And we're going to be, if you've seen it in the past, we're just going to keep trying to up the quality. We also are going to be trying to uh, start doing interviews and some more interesting shows. And we have a, a um, art exhibit uh, that is scheduled to be recorded coming up later this month. That's a lot of work. Uh, we did a long form interview uh, a few months ago with Cadejo. So there's some interesting stuff there beyond just the music. Uh, and I think that that's a cool channel to check out. Also very interesting is Nicaragua 360. That is my channel where I go out with my 360 cameras and just film the country. It's not me doing narration like I do on this channel. It's not me talking or anything. It's really just a combination of music or the natural sounds that you hear wherever we're recording. So you can view Nicaragua. But what's interesting about it is you can see it in 360 degrees. If you're on your computer or a television or your phone, you can just swipe with your finger, your remote, your mouse, and you can look around in every direction. It really helps you feel like you're in the place. But if you have a VR headset, you can actually move your head around and look all over. And it actually puts you in that place and lets you explore the different locations that we go to in a very immersive way. So that's unique. We don't get nearly as many people watching that channel as we do on others because it is very different. But I work pretty hard to make some interesting content to show different parts of the country. So you can, because a lot of people don't get to travel around Nicaragua. Even if you're here, living here, there's a lot of places you are likely to never go. And if you're visiting, there's a lot of places you're likely to miss because you just don't have enough time or you don't know about those places to go. Or you'd like to see different places and explore the country before you're here so you can make better decisions about what you want to see. Nicaragua 360 is really designed around bringing all of that to you in a really great uh, immersive way. And in some cases, the shows are just a couple minutes long. Sometimes they're pretty long, like we go see a parade and we'll record the entire thing in 360 degrees so you can just be there as part of the parade. I think that stuff's pretty cool. So definitely go check that channel out. Again, subscribe to all these if you would. It really makes a big difference for me. Our next one is Drive Warp. This is one where I take my GoPros. I'm addicted to GoPro. I'm a huge GoPro fan. Uh, I have three of them that I shoot this show on all the time. I hook it up to the windscreen of my car and drive around. I've done this in the US, I do it in Nicaragua, wherever I travel, I will be taking GoPros with me and doing this as a way to bring more of the places that I explore to you guys. Um, I really like how that goes. We do it in high speed. So you get like this really neat view as you zip around the country and see large swaths of, of terrain changing. And I think it does a good job of, just like Nicaragua 360 allows you to feel like it's you're in a place, Drive Warp lets you experience moving between places and gives you a lot of the view, like you're driving a car, of the country uh, so you can get a feel of what it's actually like to be here more than just in an isolated spot. We can't really hide the camera and be like, this is what this one view looks like. You're going to see what the car sees wherever it goes. And I enjoy watching them myself. Often it's just with music. It's a really cool channel to check out. 
I also have a channel, it's, it's a little bit older, with only one video on it currently, called This is Nicaragua. This channel I hope to work on this year. The camera that's coming is also for that channel, uh, and that is our way of making kind of a polished show teaching you about different destinations in Nicaragua. We're not going to get out a lot of episodes this year, but my goal is to have at least four really solid episodes come out during the year. If you guys would subscribe there, it's not going to be a lot of noise, but it's a really great place uh, to see more polished, more travel guide type episodes. We're definitely going to be doing an episode on Leon this year, and we may get to some others, but that's the one that we absolutely know is on the books. I also have an older channel that's older than all these called Take Flight with Scott. This is mostly travel footage that I did in Greece, Spain, France, and Italy in 2019 with my nieces. I will be adding more stuff to that channel, I'm sure, over time, but it's not a busy channel. But I do like it. It's completely different travel material to what I do here, and if you're interested, that would be great if you went over and supported that channel as well. It's, I think it's interesting. Um, it's, it's very different than the material I do here, and I'm on the show extremely little. It was a lot of me learning how to do travel shows, so I use it kind of as an experimental platform uh, to work on editing and, and work on just different things that don't fit into my normal travel uh, collection. I'm very much into cameras and photographic equipment, so I have a channel that is just there to keep me happy so that I can talk to someone about my cameras because no one here really cares. And uh, that is The Camera Cafe with Scott. Uh, it is really a traditional camera show where I'm talking about cameras, lenses, sensors, all those kinds of things. If you're into camera equipment and videography and photography, um, I'm really into Nikon, Olympus, and Fuji cameras. So it's a great place to check that out and just help with my ecosystem. So if you like hearing my voice, which is hilarious to me that so many people uh, say that that's one of the things that they're into, you have another option there as well. So those are the channels I wanted to talk to you guys about, to kind of give a little bit more exposure. It's the beginning of the year. I really want to see all these channels take off and do more and more throughout the year. Certainly some of them get a lot of attention. Nika Roomba is new and just starting to get out there, but please subscribe to that. I'd love to see us hit 250 subscribers this week. Uh, Drive Warp, I'd like to see a little bit of growth. Nicaragua 360, I really want to see us get to 500 very soon. Uh, and of course, Scott Allen Miller, we're hoping to get to 500 today or tomorrow. If you guys could make that happen, thank you so much for everyone who makes these things possible. And of course, every time you watch a video, every time you hit like, it makes a big difference. In 2024, I want to have a couple of uh, New Year's resolutions for myself. And I'm putting this on the video because I'm going to let you guys hold me accountable to some of these things. The first one, the minor one, is I want to do a lot more dynamic filming. I've had a lot of 2023 where I was stuck around the house. Yes, I went to Bolivia, I did a few things. And yes, in 2022, I went to Guatemala, did a few things. It was way too little. I didn't get out and do enough of Nicaragua at all. I didn't get out and walk enough at all, even though I did walk a lot. I'm not saying I didn't do any, but I didn't do nearly enough. It was way too much filming around the house because partially I was sick, so I'm gonna give myself a pass on that, but I'm feeling okay now, I can do things. I wanna get out and do interviews with people. I wanna meet up with more of you guys, some of you who watch my show, some of the just other content creators. Really wanna make an effort to do that, not just do like phone in like with Jack Pittman, which is fantastic, thanks Jack, but I wanna get out and like hang out with Elton from Immense Coffee and uh, actually do some shows together and like really go meet people and, and put people on the show. I wanna get more into that, right? There's like so much we could do. So hold me accountable to walking more, getting more people on the show, going more places, that stuff. That's my first piece. That's my stuff for the show. My second piece is, and I, I speak a bit of Spanish. I've been speaking Spanish on and off or, or growing a little bit or something since 1990. So I have a lot of Spanish over the years, but I'm not fluent partially because I am hard of hearing. So that makes it quite a bit harder for me. But 2024 is my year to go from I speak a bit of Spanish, I'm functional, I can do a lot of things, to I want a degree of fluency. I don't know how to really describe this, but my goals are to absolutely complete the current uh, Duolingo Spanish all the way through. I have completed it in the past, but it's much larger now, and I want to make it all the way through absolutely all of Duolingo Spanish in 2024. Um, I will hit, I believe, my five-year streak in 2024. I've already hit the four-year streak. I think that was my last uh, mark. It's hard. It's so many days. It's 1,300 and some days streak. And uh, I, I want to have every one of the uh, categories maxed out for Duolingo. So that's a hard line in the sand uh, that I'm able to define. This is things I will look like when I've done Duolingo adequately for the year. But I also want to start doing, uh, starting uh, next week, 
uh, in-person or video chat uh, Spanish language instruction where I spend uh, one hour three times a week uh, doing uh, lessons with a Spanish instructor. I've done this in the past, but I've taken a long break from it and I really benefit from it where the job is to carry on Spanish conversations and get continuous Spanish correction when you don't say things in a Nicaraguan way, when you don't say things in a fluid way, or when you just say something that's awkward. Like, that's correct, but it's not how we would say it. Like, all that kind of stuff. Really, I want to move into being able to have fast, fluent conversations the majority of the time. I want to just take it to a whole new level. I live in Nicaragua. Uh, my focus for my, uh, my, my career uh, that I want to do in the future is very focused across Latin America, and my, my current job that is not going away uh, is everything in that job is based between Mexico and Argentina. Uh, and we have a, a constant growth there. We've had a lot of great growth in the last year. It's been a really great year for us in general outside of the channel. And uh, so, so getting my Spanish to a point where I can really carry on phone conversations, where I really never need to hop back uh, to English, that is very much on my agenda for 2024. My wife managed to do it. She has much better hearing than me. Uh, so 2022 was kind of, she just leapt forward in 2023. She really solidified hers a lot. I've certainly improved in 2023, but I want to make that absolute huge jump to the point where I can use Spanish all the time. My kids were hoping we'll do uh, something similar. We'll see. That's not their New Year's resolution, but it is mine. So those two things, I want you guys to hold me accountable. I want regular checkups. Scott, are you doing these things? Like you can watch the one, but the other you're going to need to see. It would be great if by 2026, and I know that's a ways away, but by 2026, I would love to be doing this channel in Spanish as well. Certainly not instead, but if I was able to do a channel in Spanish for everything that we do and and, and bring a lot of the same material, but in Spanish, that would be amazing. Uh, I could potentially keep this channel longer form and then do like a summary in Spanish for people who want to uh, follow along with the same information day to day, but, but have it kind of summarized in Spanish. Like there's a couple options, but I want to do something where I'm doing by 2026 Spanish on a regular basis. Uh, in 2023, I did Spanish on television, like national television interviewed in Spanish. That was nerve wracking and really cool. And uh, it went well. So I'm at a point where even a year ago, I was able to do Spanish on TV, but I want to, I really want it to be my main language most of the time, um, because everything I do is in Spanish, right? It, it gives you so much of a better uh, advantage and lifestyle living in this region. And I really want to see a lot more of the Americas uh, in the coming couple of years uh, and, and explore so much more. And the more I speak Spanish, the more I'm able to just do that, just get stuck into communities and neighborhoods and, and restaurants and, and explore food and culture and music and all those things. Uh, and we're going to work really hard on the channel to bring more and more of that as well. Thank you so much for sticking through a long episode today. Uh, I hope that we answered some questions. A lot of people I know are here. Do you want to come to Nicaragua in 2024? I hope that a lot of you say yes, you do. I hope to meet up with a lot of you, maybe put some of you on the show. I hope my New Year's resolutions uh, are things that I managed to stick to. I think I will. I feel good about it. Um, and I don't normally make those. That's kind of a new thing for me. And I'm really excited about all the new camera gear that has already arrived. We're just waiting for Paul to bring it down in a week and a half at this point that I'm recording this. And uh, one, I, I love my camera gear. It's going to be really exciting. And it's going to make me that much more excited to do the show every day just because I have more things to play with. Take a moment to like and subscribe. Tell your friends and family about the show. Tell someone who needs to know about traveling to Nicaragua or just would like a long form travel, living in Central America, talking vlog show to listen to. Let people know about that. Post a link on social media if you could, especially like Reddit and Facebook. Those are super effective to just get the word out there that there's this kind of topic uh, to cover. Of course, you can buy me a coffee. I also have a book, completely different topic on Linux administration, but the links down below, just I, a lot of you actually buy the book. So thank you for that as well. It's done quite well. And uh, as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.